The world of One Piece is vast, both metaphorically and physically. The planet is so massive that it takes years to sail all the way around it. There are continent-sized islands just kind of sitting there, minding their own business, and even the globe itself looks way too weird to be normal. Yet, the planet's exact size has always haunted me. I would try and discover that answer, but would ultimately be unsatisfied. Until now, that is. After months of searching and working, I have finally discovered a reliable method to discover the planet's size, and it is still consistent with the wonderful world that we see every episode. Hello Internet, Jojo here, and today we're going to calculate the size of the One Piece planet. It really needs a name. Anyways, when attempting to answer the question of the planet's size, there are a few obvious things you have to account for. I've seen many calculations and made a few myself that put the planet size anywhere from hundreds of times to millions of times the size of our own planet. But after all this time, none of those have sat right with me. A major reason for this is because they tend to break down when put under pressure. Now there are many ways to put these calculations to the test, but the one that always gets me is the simple if the planet is so large, then how do they get around it in wind sailboats? Of course, the suspension of disbelief is important for a story. You can't just ignore it. But it is true that the vast majority of boats are sailboats. So that is our first and most important question that we must give a proper answer to before we can come to a conclusion. We must provide a reasonable answer for the boats being able to sail around the planet like they do in our own world. Another issue with the many and varying sizes of the planets is that they are many and varying. There are so many different calculations, but none of them are consistent. So that is our second mission. We need at least two calculations that are similar enough using different methods but support each other. Also, bonus points if we can keep all the calculations and measurements on one panel in order to reduce any assumptions. Now, where to begin? Well, in my previous calculation, we started with this panel. And that is a good place to start and is where we're going to start today. However, unlike last time, when I was looking over this, I saw something that I missed before. Something that all navigational charts have and are all over the maps of One Piece. Grid squares. These little squares, with varying sizes depending on what map you're using, are uniform throughout this entire map. In real life, these squares are generally measured in 100 meters, 1 kilometer, or 100 kilometers. But those don't fit with this calculation as they would make this planet absolutely minuscule and we have to fit Alabasta on here somewhere. Wait, Alabasta. Alabasta is the only island that we can prove its size. If we can use that in this panel, we can get a lot of answers. We know that the central river that splits the island is 50 kilometers wide and we get arrow shots over the entire island. In the past, we did the same thing and found that Alabasta was about 5,075 kilometers wide. It's literally a continent as Antarctica is 5,500 kilometers at its widest. Now, Alabasta is the fourth island the Straw Hats visited in their journey through the Grand Line, meaning that it must be one of these islands here. In my previous attempt at discovering the planet's size, we tried to count all the islands they visited to find which of these paths they followed. But because we don't know if this chart includes Sky Island, Jaya, or even Thriller Bark, we can't use this method anymore. However, not to worry, we are still flying half a calculation. You see, when Shaki is explaining the supernova to the Straw Hats, we get this lovely few seconds of animation. As you can see, the many paths are color coordinated, likely in accordance with the supernova who traveled it. There is light blue for Hawkins, yellow for Law, pink for Bonnie, and you get the idea. Now, as to Luffy, it is this central path that is colored red, and red has always been associated with Luffy. So, that is the path that Luffy must have taken. With that now in hand, and the fact that Alabasta was the fourth island they went to, we find that Alabasta must be this island here. Because Alabasta is 5,700 kilometers wide, we can compare it to the adjacent square and find that one grid square on this map is 14,097 kilometers wide, and the Grand Line itself is 118,416 kilometers wide. Now, tracing the grid lines on the far side of the map, and we discover that this map stretches out at least 13 grid squares towards the right side. Because the Grand Line is a perfect line that splits the planet in half, there must be as much planet on the left side as the right. This brings the total diameter of the planet to about 26 grid squares plus the width of the Grand Line. 
multiplying 14,097 kilometers by 26, and we get a total of 366,527 kilometers. Adding the width of the Grand Line to this, and we get a total circumference of 484,944 kilometers. A circumference of 484,000 kilometers would yield a diameter of 154,362 kilometers, or 12 times larger than that of Earth's diameter, and would be 1,776 times larger than Earth by volume. The planet being 1,776 times larger than Earth is actually pretty interesting, as in the year 1776, the US Congress permitted civilian warships to attack British warships, effectively making them the first legal pirates, much like the Seven Warlords are. This is absolutely useless information, but I thought it was interesting. Now, this calculation does put the planet a bit smaller than we calculated before, but if I'm going to be honest here, I feel much better about it, as it requires far fewer leaps in logic. And it looks like we got those bonus points for keeping the vast majority of the information in one panel. However, we have yet to satisfy the one thing that we need to answer. If the planet is 12 times larger than Earth, how can they cross it in sailboats? Fortunately, we actually do have an answer. But before that, we must do what the YouTube algorithm dictates, and that's the obligatory, please like and subscribe, if you want to. I don't like putting these in my videos, I feel like it breaks the flow, but, you know, the YouTube algorithm consumes all and wants more. Also, for those of you who have subscribed, could you make sure you have your notifications on? That would be great. I mean, what's the point of subscribing if you don't know when videos come out? I mean, that's like having a gun, but no bullets. Or a computer, but no battery. It doesn't make any sense. Also, I have trust issues involving YouTube. Also. I have been thinking about making a video about how overpowered guns in One Piece are. So if that sounds interesting, then hit the like button because if you reach, I, I don't know, 100 was reached pretty easily in a previous video. Let's go with 200. If you reach 200 likes, I will make it. Got it? Cool. Let's get back to topic. Of all the characters in One Piece who have made their name known, there is only one who has circumnavigated the planet in a wooden boat. Goldie Roger. From the moment they entered the Grand Line to the moment they found the One Piece, two years passed. And because the Oro Jackson, actually Spanish for gold, Roger's ship bears a striking resemblance to the real life Queen Anne's Revenge, Blackbeard's ship, we can assume that they are the same ship type. The Queen Anne's Revenge is a frigate, and frigates can sail at about 14 knots or about 16 miles per hour. With this speed, in two years, they could cover 454,258 kilometers. This is not quite the circumference that we just calculated for the planet, but it is surprisingly close, and we must also remember that boats in One Piece are just a lot faster than they are in the real world. Take this Trihats for example. They were able to go from Drum Island to Alabasta in about 9 days at most. As you can see from this, Drum Island is not even within several continents of Alabasta, meaning they must have been moving far faster than a normal ship. Not to mention that when you have to use a boat to get around, boats tend to become much better. Like how humans went from walking to using bikes, then from bikes to using cars, then from cars to using airplanes. All of which, coincidentally, the world of One Piece has. You know guys, there are many feats in One Piece that don't impress me, and really swimming across the entire combat was one of them. But now, my mind has changed. This feat is effectively him swimming across the entire continent without appearing to be too tired. I don't care what world you're from, that's pretty impressive. One band of the Calm Belt is usually depicted as being about half the width of the Grand Line, and Amazon Lily is located somewhere around the Calm Belt. Assuming that Amazon Lily is in the middle of the Calm Belt, we can find that Riley must have dealt with about 29,604 kilometers of Sea King infested ocean. He swam over five times the length of Antarctica. Of course, Amazon Lily is probably much closer to the Grand Line, so it's probably not all 29,000 kilometers that he swam, but I certainly appreciate this feat far more than I once did before. With that, we have come to the end of the video, and come to the end of our journey calculating the size of the planet. I hope that you guys enjoyed this, and learned something. I know there are many other calculations out there for this exact same thing, and feel free to let me know the ones you've heard down in the comments, but I feel very good about this calculation, as it's large enough to explain the weirdness of the many things in the One Piece world, but not so large that it reaches the realms of absurdity. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go recalculate some feats using this more accurate planet size. 
Thanks for watching. Remember to stay spectacular. Jojo, out.